welcome, welcome to the seventh European Film Festival. For more details about other films and special activities taking place at the festival, please visit the festival website www.eurofilmfest.co.za. I'll repeat it again www.eurofilmfest.co.za. Please also do smash a like and follow our social media pages. The hashtag is hashtag EUFF2020. The festival would also like to appreciate its supporters bringing the best of European film to South Africa's home screens. The delegation of the European Film Festival 2020 is a partnership between projects of the delegation of the European Union to South Africa and 12 other European embassies and cultural agencies in South Africa. I'm your host. My name is Mendim Klongo, a filmmaker, arts administrator, and training consultant. I'm not alone. I have the pleasure of being joined by Simone Katoni, producer of The Traitor. How are you, Simone? I'm fine. Thank you very much for inviting us to your festival. We're very happy that uh, the traitor arrives in South Africa after a journey that was quite long. So we <laughs> were very happy to be here. I'm very happy to be here. Thank you so much. Um, just to build some context, this is a formal Q&A uh, with our guests catching up on anything and everything about the traitor. For our viewers, I'd like to share the synopsis of the film. Right, so the traitor takes place in the early 1980s. An all-out war rages between Sicilian mafia bosses over the heroin trade. Tommaso Buscetta, a made man, flees to the and hides in Brazil. Back home, scores are being settled, and Buscetta watches from afar as his sons and brothers are killed in Palmero. Knowing he may be next, arrested and extradited to Italy, by the Brazilian police, Buscetta makes a decision that will change everything for the Mafia. He decides to meet with the judge Giovanni Falcone and betray the eternal vow he made to the Cosa Nostra. I trust this gives some context to our viewers. This is a true story of how the Mafia was defeated in Italy. We're really gonna unpack this going forward and this is a beautiful film. And again, we have the honor of being joined by Simone, uh, producer of the film. So as a way of introduction, Simone, may you kindly introduce yourself um, to our viewers and take us on a journey. How you got into film, uh, how you became a producer and eventually worked with the esteemed director, Marco Pelocheo. Um, I'm Simone and uh, I'm 36 year old. I started studying movies in London uh, at the London uh, University, and then I went back to Italy where I started working as a producer. I started producing uh, documentaries and especially Pietro Marcello's uh, The Silence of Pelechan. Then I entered in Marco Bellocchio's companies many years ago, and we produced together different movies, also from Marco. Uh, we had the pleasure also to work on uh, uh, Le Redoutable by Michel Azanavicius and uh, we started joining uh, a path together with Beppe Caschetto that is uh, one of the most important Italian producers and we made together many, many projects and Beppe Caschetto came to us a couple of years ago uh, with the idea of um, preparing a movie about the life of Tommaso Buscetta that uh, is uh, one of the most important uh, characters inside the history of Mafia because uh, he was the first one uh, unveiling some secrets uh, and uh, talking deeply about how the Mafia mechanism uh, work until uh, the moment Buscetta started to talk with the, the judge Falcone uh, people doesn't even know also the you know police or investigators or judges they didn't even know that the real name was Cosa Nostra so it was a you know a central uh, character in uh, in the criminal organization in a certain way and now we are preparing uh, many other projects a couple of tv series uh, 
a movie by Marco, the new movie by Marco, and uh, the new movie by Italian master Gianni Amelio. So that's more or less uh, what we have on the table and what we did until now. Wow, and there's a lot to look forward to. And such a young man at 36. Um, so the esteemed Marco Bliecchio, uh, the director of The Traitor, has been in the industry for over five decades now. Um, known for The Good Morning Night, uh, Fist of the Pocket, and The Wedding Director. So Marco is very, very highly esteemed. Um, and as experienced direct, uh, producer as yourself, uh, Simone, this is not your first uh, project. Um, and as you alluded, you know, you've worked with Marco in, in the past. Um, how is it working um, with such a legend? Um, it's, uh, it's a gift in a certain way because, uh, you know, you work with a guy that was a friend of Pasolini and all the Italian masters uh, of the 60s and the 70s. So he comes from a certain way of uh, making movies that uh, now is, uh, let's say, changing or disappearing. So uh, his way of working uh, is always... Uh, oriented in uh, looking for the highest quality possible or the uh, most original uh, um, way of telling stories, uh, but keeping uh, uh, his own uh, originality, his own uh, point of view, his own way of looking at the project you're doing. And it's also very beautiful to work with uh, such a guy because uh, He's always the, the youngest guy in the room since he always has uh, ideas uh, and uh, he always likes to have confrontation with the people he work with, uh, starting from producers, uh, screenwriters, but also all the people on set. So there's always every day is, uh, is um, a new uh, discover. I mean... Uh, uh, you don't only write a story and then you go on set and you try to do what is written, but you try to improve every day what you what you plan to do. You always try to find solution to make things better. And that is something that gives you a lot of uh, energy and takes also a lot of your time because you always have to be on uh, on things, on top of things in order to, to make things happen. But... Uh, it's really much, uh, uh, it gives you a lot of energy because you feel part of a process and you feel uh, uh, part of doing something that is uh, unique in a certain way. Sounds lovely. Um, that collaborative and community spirit is always the underlining theme. Um, now, um, just some producer talk here. Um, as a producer, I mean, your role is to bring in life um, to the film uh, beyond the silver screen. Now that COVID has happened, uh, what are the plans um, that you have to ensure that the audiences um, get to see this masterpiece? Uh, you talk about the traitor? Or... Yes, sir. Uh... I mean, The Traitor, we have been uh, in a certain way lucky because The Traitor was released uh, during, uh, after Cannes 2019. So we had uh, a whole uh, year and a half of life without this uh, nightmare of COVID. Unfortunately, in some country around the world where the movie has been released, uh, uh, the movie was in theaters when they closed everything. Uh, so we cannot do a lot, uh, honestly, because we sign all the contracts with the windows between theaters, TV and uh, video on demand release uh, that were quite fixed. Uh, I know that the movie has been also bought by video on demand platforms or, uh, or uh, streamers. So I really hope that this gives uh, the chance to the project to uh, reach uh, other audiences uh, and new people. Uh, so more or less, that's what that this is what happening. Mm, for example, in Germany, we have been released uh, uh, last summer, and uh, the access to cinemas was limited. So 
uh, even if the movie scored uh, very well in terms of uh, number of people going to cinemas, the problem was that the access uh, to the cinema was limited to a certain amount of people for each theater. So that means that we couldn't reach uh, all the people we talked about. Let's uh, hope that uh, in these countries, uh, uh, the streamers or the video on demand uh, or the pay TVs can uh, put the movie in uh, in the in the circuit in order to to show it uh, to the largest number of people possible. Definitely, I think it's a film that needs to be seen by the world. And uh, thank you to the European Film Festival for making this possible. I myself have viewed the film, and it's an absolute masterpiece. Um, now, I looked at the film, um, Simone, and I thought this was definitely an enormous production. How big of an undertaking was this film? I mean, I saw multiple countries, a, a huge cast. How do you pull this off? Uh, it was a long uh, journey, but not so long for the, the bigness, uh, for, for, some, uh, for the bigness of the project, let's say. Uh, we announced the project in Cannes 2016 and we entered in production in, uh, let's say, two years later. Um, in a certain way, we started uh, uh, in uh, building up the production team, going to the people that we already work with. So the French of Advitam and the Germans of uh, uh, the Match Factory production. Uh, and then we look at the story and we knew that there was a consistent part of the story uh, set in Brazil. Uh, so we built up uh, this uh, four countries co-production. We also were lucky because uh, me and Marco, we were guests uh, in Sao Paulo in Brazil of uh, a film festival where we screened the movie we produced. And there we met uh, uh, our Brazilian partners. And it, it happened uh, more or less, uh, it was uh, October 2016. So we had time to build up all the co-production and uh, we, we have been lucky in having partners that, you know, partners are not only companies as, uh, you know, Gullane in Brazil, that is a company run by Fabiano Gullane and Caio Gullane, or Advitam, that is Alexandra Henoschberg in, in France or Viola Fugen and Michael Weber in Germany. So we had the right time to look for, uh, first of all, the, the production strategies. So we decided which scenes to uh, shot in uh, Germany and which scene to shot in Italy, which scene to be shot in the uh, US and then uh, the Brazilian part, of course, was the Brazilian part. And this gave us the uh, possibility to build up a strategy in order to make the project uh, interesting, not only from an editorial point of view, but also from an economic and productive point of view. I mean that uh, uh, we were able to access uh, local funds because we shot certain part of the movie in certain part of the globe. And that uh, meant a lot because uh, uh, first of all, we raised uh, the money we needed, uh, but uh, we also been able to have already four countries attached to the project. So it means that you already have uh, four audiences that, you know, four uh, sales uh, for those countries. Uh, that also was really fascinating because gave me that I also followed the executive production the uh, opportunity to uh, look how people produce uh, movies in other parts of the world. I already work with uh, Eastern European, uh, French, uh, and Switzerland producers, but you know, having such a big production and all in one, a part in Italy, a part in Germany, a part in Brazil, was also very interesting in making these people cooperate and making this different way of producing a, a deal together. So it was really interesting to, to make that thing. Well, some really great insights.
website for aspiring producers like myself. Now, maybe just to touch a bit on the story of here, um, for me, the film is already a classic. I mean, it has its own seductive blend of style and a pure, authentic thrill ride. Is this a genre film? Perhaps a thriller, a mafia style film? Um, would you look at films like Goodfellas, um, The Godfather, Scarface in the same category? Um, were you conscious of how you wanted to tell the film? Uh, let's say that uh, unfortunately, Mafia is uh, uh, you know a need and a team. Uh, an issue that uh, is very, you know, bankable all around the world. For example, in, the la in these last years, uh, there was the TV series about uh, um, uh, Pablo Escobar, you know, Narcos, the first series, but usually all yeah. the mafia movies are attractive for the audience. So I don't know if we can consider this a, a genre but for sure it's something that makes the project uh, immediately identifiable by the audience so you know what you're going to watch then each movie is different from the other because uh, most of these movies are done by directors with such a look and such a way of looking at the story so they have it their own originality for sure in making the traitor we watched uh, many movies uh, also because uh, we know, for example, that all the Mafia members were completely maniac about some um, Mafia movies. For example, uh, all the Mafia members in the 70s and the 80s uh, uh, knew quite uh, line by line the Godfather because there were kind of uh, mythological uh, movies for them. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and so... Um, we knew in doing the movies that we were inside a certain frame, but uh, we tried to make the painting, let's say, as much original as possible. So Marco tried to keep uh, his, uh, as I said before, his uh, point of view, his originality within a story that uh, it is a mafia movie, but it can also be considered a biopic because it's a movie about a guy. The, the, the life or you know large part of the life of a guy so it's a mix at the end of the day we try to keep uh, the most identifiable uh, uh, issues of each element in order to uh, address something that uh, talks to uh, a wide uh, the, the wider range of people possible really lovely mix. Um, Simonia, must compliment you and the team for that. Um, the, the film does have an underlining Shakespearean family's drama feud. Um, I mean, I saw a father, a husband and brother in Buscetta. I, I certainly had so much empathy for the character, um, but I had to make a decision that he was still very much a criminal. Um, and I really fought with myself to identify you know, the heroes and the heroines um, in the film. And one person that really stood out uh, was the tenacious um, character of the judge, uh, Giovanni Falcone. Um, was the creative direction aimed at positioning uh, Tommaso as a, a Judas Iscariot or both the villain and hero? Or was there other plans uh, with this regard? You know, this thing was very much complicating during the writing process because uh, uh, Buscetta uh, was a very complex uh, person. I mean, uh, at the same time, he was the one that uh, destroyed the Mafia because uh, after his talkings with uh, Judge Falcone, Mafia was uh, never the same that was before because they... They arrested it just in a row, 450 members of the Mafia, and top, we're talking about top members, not uh, you know, street uh, members of the Mafia. Uh, but at the same time, uh, uh, Buscetta was a guy that killed many people, and he was a member of the Mafia. And he also, let's say, he, he told the story he wanted to, to, to say. I mean... Uh, he told the story that he, he was not uh, uh, sharing anymore the the code of the new mafia uh, of, the, of the mafia of the 80s. That the mafia it comes from 
is something that uh, has uh, some uh, rules and some uh, honorable uh, way of living. And that's, of course, uh, something that he had to say because uh, uh, he wanted also to save himself. Because we don't have to forget that uh, during the Second Mafia War, Buscetta was on the side that uh, was defeated. So at a certain point, he had no more, uh, no more uh, way to follow or cooperating with the, the justice or uh, waiting to be killed. And that uh, is something that we have to consider uh, about all the events that came. The real hero of, the, of, the, of this uh, war at the Mafia was uh, Giovanni Falcone. That was a guy that, uh, even if in those years some judges, uh, no, all the judges were without uh, bodyguards or also criticized by the, the things they were doing, he continued on his way and uh, he continued to investigate. He was the one that started to uh, follow the money movements all around the world in order to understand what was behind the, what was behind, uh, uh, the real mafia. So uh, Buscetta uh, was a, tif a complex character to, to describe because uh, we must uh, make people empathize with him, with uh, a person that uh, had uh, uh, 14 members of his family killed, two sons, uh, many nephews, uh, one brother, and so on. But at the same time, we don't have to forget that he was also a mafia member and uh, a person that killed yeah. many. So that's why, for example, at the finale, we decided to keep... Uh, uh, a scene where uh, uh, a younger Buscetta kills a guy and he waited uh, many, yeah. many years to kill that guy because we never have to forget that we are talking about uh, a person that was a member of that, uh, of that uh, world. And uh, my question is, if uh, Buscetta's side didn't uh, uh, lost the Mafia war, but if they were able to win, what Buscetta uh, had, would, would have done? Maybe he would, never, uh, he, he would never decided to talk to the police because when he was arrested in Brazil, uh, all his friends, uh, all his side of mafia in Sicily were killed. So he was completely alone. He was a very charismatic guy because we, we made a big, big... Uh, uh, job of uh, research and we spoke with the people that knew him, with the policemen, uh, with his lawyers, uh, with people that was at the so-called maxi trial in Palermo and everybody says that he was a super charismatic guy. So the, the Totorina side that was the, the winning side of that uh, war knew that the only guy able to create problem was Buscetta. That's why they started to chase him and they started to kill all the members of his family because they wanted him to come back to, to try to have a revenge in order to kill him. But Judge Falcone arrived first and was able to uh, take Buscetta and uh, make him, let's say, uh, do a different revenge. That was... Uh, talking to the uh, justice and make uh, uh, all the mafia members arrested. Sure. Um, a very watershed historical piece. Um, just in wrapping up, um, Simone, um, how would you introduce this film to a South African audience and what would you want them to take out of this film? Oh, it's very hard, but I would say that it's a movie that can, uh, you know, can tell you that you always have time to do the right thing. And even if you are, uh, when you are alone, when you are defeated, you always have the chance to make the, a good thing. So it's a real story about how a man that made many, many terrible mistakes along his life uh, had the chance and had the courage to follow the right path in order to try to, you know, make things better. 
Rob, thank you so much, Simone, and congratulations on the awards. Um, I, I heard that you picked up the David Dio Donatello Award. Um, good luck going forward with the film, and I really appreciated the film, um, and I know our audience members would really enjoy this film. Uh, thank you to all our viewers. We really hope you enjoyed this piece going forward. Uh, go on and rent the film, you will not regret it. Um, just as a note, the festival ends on the 22nd of November. For more details about the other films and special activities taking place at the film festival, please visit the website. It is www.eurofilmfest.co.za. Please also do smash a like and follow our socials. And the hashtag is EUFF2020, bringing the best of European films to South Africa's home screens. From me and Simone, adio. <laughs> Grazie. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Simone. Have a blessed evening going forward. You too.